Hello and welcome to the online worship service of Pilgrim Christian Church in Chardon, Ohio. My name is Sam Greening and I'm the pastor. We are Disciples of Christ, a movement for wholeness in a fragmented world. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here at our table. And so in a little while, when we share in the Lord's Supper, please know that you are invited to participate as well. All you'll need is some bread and some wine or whatever the equivalent is in your eyes. Now, please remember that there are 12 days of Christmas, and then there's one more holiday on January 6th called the Epiphany. And so until the Epiphany, we're going to be lighting our Christ candle and placing it in our Advent wreath. Let's begin our worship in the name of God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit, with a call to worship from the first two verses of Isaiah 62. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. Let us pray. O God, creator of all, the child born for us is the Savior of the world. May he who made us your children welcome us into your kingdom, where he is alive and reigns with you now and forevermore. Amen. Now, I said just a few moments ago that there are 12 days of Christmas, and during those 12 days, there are several holidays, holidays that people who observe a formal liturgical calendar might know about, and I know that does not include too many of us, but you might be familiar with some of these days. For instance, the day after Christmas is called St. Stephen's Day, and St. Stephen was the man that many of us consider to be the first martyr. And you might remember a certain song where this gets mentioned. The song is Good King Wenceslas, and it starts out, Good King Wenceslas looked out on the feast of Stephen, the feast of Stephen being the day after Christmas. Now, today is a day called St. John's Day, the John in question being John the Evangelist. December 27th is his feast day, and then tomorrow is a day called the Feast of the Holy Innocents. And so when we say that St. Stephen was the first martyr, that's not technically true, because the first martyrs were actually the little children that the Bible says Herod killed when he was so jealous that a Messiah had been born that he tried to get rid of him by killing all the children of Bethlehem. And so the Feast of the Holy Innocents is December 28th. This probably is not too familiar to you, but there is one carol that goes with this holiday that you've probably heard. And Anne has a unique interpretation of it that she's going to play for us on the organ. The song is called The Coventry Carol, and I'm going to include the lyrics for you to meditate on as you listen to the music.
reading from Paul's letter to the Galatians, the fourth chapter, verses 4 through 7. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child, and if a child, then also an heir through God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, most of us can probably remember the world 20 years ago, 21 now, actually, when we were all getting ready to welcome the year 2000. Now, I don't remember where, but I got a book back then called Prayers for a Thousand Years, and it was filled with prayers and poems and other pieces to help us prepare for the new millennium. Now, it had some good stuff in it, but there's one little poem that for some reason occurred to me not too long ago that, that I've been thinking about quite a lot recently, and here it is. A child stood on his seat in a restaurant holding the railing of the chair back as though to address a courtroom. Nobody knows what's going to happen next. Then his turning slide back down to his food, relieved and proud to say the truth, as were we to hear it. Now, I don't know exactly what I expected of the new millennium way back then in December 1999 but I'm pretty sure it wasn't what we got this year. In his letter to the Galatians, Paul talked about the birth of the Son of God in the fullness of time. Of course, who really knows what the fullness of time is? God knows, of course, but we can't predict it. As far as what God's doing in the world, we have to admit that the kid standing on the chair in that restaurant knew exactly what he was talking about. Nobody knows what's going to happen next. When God's Son came into the world, some people may have been expecting something to happen, but really nobody was expecting his arrival to be exactly when it was and where it was and to whom it was and to whom it was made known. But here on the final Sunday of the worst year that many of us can remember, let's affirm that Nobody knows what's going to happen next, and that's a good thing. God has something in store for each of us in the year 2021. And just as God has something planned for each individual, God also has something planned for all of us, that is, all of us together. Because despite all that's happened, we're still a church. We're still the body of Christ that met on the southeast corner of the town square in Chardon, Ohio, and we hope that we can return there again soon. Before I bring this little message to a close, let me remind you that I'm going to be posting two more videos between today and next Sunday. One is for New Year's Eve and one on New Year's Day. I hope that you will join me in dedicating both the year that's behind us and the year that's ahead to God. And finally, let me share a couple of stanzas from a hymn written for New Year's 1945. These words were written by Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was being held at that time in a Gestapo prison in Berlin. Bonhoeffer was a pastor who refused to adhere to the church that was loyal to Hitler. And so not only was he imprisoned, but just a few weeks before the end of the war, he was executed by the Nazis. And yet, his faith never left him. So let us, whose faith has been challenged this year, hear these words today, as we also think about the fact that nobody knows what's going to happen next. By gracious powers so wonderfully sheltered, and confidently waiting come what may, we know that God is with us night and morning and never fails to greet us each new day. Yet is this heart by its old foe tormented. Still evil days bring burdens hard to bear. O oh, give our frightened souls the sure salvation for which, O oh Lord, you taught us to prepare. 
And when this cup you give is filled to brimming with bitter sorrow hard to understand, we take it thankfully and without trembling out of so good and so beloved a hand. With uplifted spirits and from the depths of our hearts, we thank you, O God, for your great gifts to us, for life and all its blessings, for family and friends and neighbors, for your church and our place in it, we are truly grateful. Most of all, we thank you for the gift of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, whose birth we celebrate each December. May the good news of his nativity inspire in us the courage of Mary, the love of Joseph, the eloquence of the angels, the obedience of the shepherds, and the wisdom of the wise men. As we make room for the Christ child in our hearts, help us to nurture the Christ within, that as he grows and teaches and heals, we may be receptive to his message and open to his ministry. May we never forget that the one who was born in Bethlehem is the same one who died on Calvary, destroying our death and granting us abundant life. We remember, too, that on the night before he died, Jesus took a loaf of bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat this, for this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and shared it with them, saying, This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So send your Holy Spirit to settle on these gifts before us, that in this bread we may discern the body of Christ, and in this cup we may taste your goodness and see the salvation that you have prepared for all your people. As your Spirit descends on us, we lift one another up in prayer. Be with all who suffer or grieve. Be with the persecuted and the imprisoned, and grant your peace to all who are frightened. All these prayers we bring to you in the name of the one who with you in the Holy Spirit reigns as one God, even Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body. For we all partake of the same loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup of blessing which we consecrate is a sharing in the blood of Christ. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are all who take refuge in God. As we part company today, let us go forth proclaiming to all that we have seen the glory of God in an humble child and believing that there is a light that shines in the darkness, which the darkness cannot overcome. And may the grace of God who loves you, the peace of Christ which is beyond all understanding, and the joy of the Holy Spirit which dwells within you be with each of you this day and for all days to come. Amen. <laughs>